And what's really cool about this device, see it there, is again, it's got 1D, 1D and 2D barcoding capabilities with RFID. Um, it's got Bluetooth capability. So I'm turning on my device here. Actually, first, first I'll attach my smartphone. That's what really makes it cool. Um, this is great because of, um, you know, companies who have employees who have one phone for personal use and business use, they can mm -hmm. reuse the devices, track the cost of the solution down. Um, so most companies also have company-issued devices, um, which you can have put to a casing like this here. This casing cost me about $14. Um, anyway, this is Samsung S7 that I'm going to attach to the device. Something real cool, uh, real slick. Um, and in a moment, I'm going to demo, once Pete gives me permission uh, to, to show you my screen, I'm going to demo a record to core inventory. And what that means is I've created an inventory of a, of a location, and I'm going to go look for the items that actually belong in that location. You can also create inventories not just on that zone, but I can also skin it down and say, well, not only do I want this zone, but I only want tablets. I only want weapons. I only want Humvees and not tanks. You know, I can really classify exactly what I'm looking for and scan down my location, uh, my inventory. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to inventory this uh, area right here. So you're doing what we refer to as a record to floor, meaning that for anybody who's looking at um, the streaming uh, cameras in the streaming screens right now, you'll see that there are three columns in which there's a missing assets column, an excess assets, and a correct assets. When an inventory is set up using UC Web, that cycle count of that location, everything drops into missing until we positively identify and we'll either see them go into the green category, meaning yes, it was there and we expected it, or we may come across excess assets in that location that we may want to know are there now and those will appear for us as well. And anything left over that's missing will allow us to really isolate down to a small subset and if we need to go hunt around and find them, then we have that capability of doing so. So that's the way UC Web handles a cycle count like this. And Bob, at this point, if you're ready, I'm actually going to hand you over the screen uh, to, to the phone that you have doing the data capture. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, over to you. You should be seeing it appear here momentarily. So I just want to mention the ergonomics of this device. When you walk around, I mean, this thing was like created to just fit right in your hand. Uh, this device also as well. I mean, I've worked with these devices for five years here at AW Track and market data capture projects all around the world. They have a real true purpose, especially when using offline data capture installed from uh, Google Play or the Apple Store. Um, this this is actually UC Web because UC Web is a software based uh, uh, a SaaS offered uh, software in the cloud. I'm accessing it and tapping into it right here from my mobile phone. Um, however, we've optimized it to recognize smartphones and tablets to give you a different experience based on your screen type. So we're going to be demoing uh, the inventory feature in this uh, in this piece of software here. Um, so I'm going to choose my inventory. You know, again, this interface uh, we've we've revealed some of the most critical aspects of UC Web on this device. Um, so again, here's the inventory. I'm going to choose my inventory there. And now I'm brought to my scan screen. So now I'm ready to actually do my inventory. Uh, as it mentions here, it says you can scan an asset, a UID, or an RFID tag associated to an asset. So again, you can inventory 1D barcoded items, 2D or 2D UID. Uh, and now RFID for all our UC Web users out there who are just used to using the barcoding capability and going up to one asset one at a time, which can really, again, it's so time consuming. There's safety involved, climbing ladders, and, you know, this is the solution. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to pull the trigger on this device. And I'm actually going to capture some of what I'm looking for and also excess inventory for demonstration purposes, creating what that's like as well. So as I pull the trigger here, as you can see, I'm not touching an asset. I'm not putting the putting the barcode. I mean the RFID reader up against an asset, and I'm able to capture about half a dozen right now. So now yeah. if I just wave it around, keep going. You're seeing all those greens, which are correct. Like the Apple iPad, the laptops here, the 9190s. 
I'm also capturing some excess inventory indicated in yellow um, surrounding areas. You can uh, reduce the amount of transmit power coming from this device to really stick to a really small zone, or you can expand it to capture a large zone, which is what I'm doing right now. So again, I mean, the power of RFID uh, kind of in your pocket, literally smartphone. <laughs> um, it, it's real powerful. I just inventoried all those items in a fraction of the time. I'm ready to go back to my desk and do other other things for my company to really push my company ahead. Uh, not that inventory is not important, but you know, my company hey, hey. pushes ahead. So. Daryl, I'm going to come back over to you now, and you can uh, maybe show us that uh, tablet uh, screen that you had and how that uh, shows to reconcile against that those three columns that we had started off with. There they are. So we can see that there are as many as four assets that were identified that should have been there because that was a location in which they were assigned. The Dell laptop, a couple MC9190s, and an iPad. We found three assets that we that somehow arrived at that location that we didn't expect there or that the records didn't show were supposed to be there. And then we also have four items, uh, a Samsung tablet, an RCA tablet, a laptop, and an example asset uh, that we now need to go hunt down. Um, so now we have a good picture of that reconciliation and we can address it and resolve it. Right, guys? And this device again, really is a powerful combination because you now have a reader that can scan barcodes and RFID tags, although we just demonstrated RFID for that cycle count, and it interfaces directly with a very powerful mobile computer that would be your smartphone or just a tablet that you could actually buy right off the shelf as well, or that could be provided um, as a unit, an Android device that would go along with the unit if required to do so.